All right, welcome back to the Prolific Author Podcast. Today I have a really informative interview for you that I'm actually really excited to put out. I was able to interview author Naomi Alt, and she is making a lot of money and doing really well on Kindle Bella. And I was so pleased to get this interview with her because I have asked several people, lots of different authors about Kindle Bella, and nobody's ever been able to give me, you know, very specific, succinct answers. I mean, most people I hear of tried it in the beginning and it didn't do so well, so it kind of petered out for them and they pulled their books from it or whatever it was they were writing. Um, and then other people just say, well, I've looked at it, but I don't know that much about it. And that's kind of where I am. I mean, I'm not judging because the reason I want to know is that I don't know anything about it and I'm trying to find out. But Naomi sat down with me for um, just under an hour and she was able to give me so much detail about what it's like to post on Kindle Bella that I am actually considering doing it now, whereas I really wasn't before. So um, yeah, if you have ever been curious about Kindle Bella, want to know what it's like, how it works, how it's going right now, it is still in its infancy. And I will say that much like TikTok or something, this really is the best time to get in because chances are it's going to change in the future. Amazon will always change how it works things. And um, so yeah, if you really want to build a following there, this is probably the time. So um, oh, the other thing that I wanted to add before I jump into the interview is that she mentions at one point that you cannot run an Amazon ad to Kindle Vela. About a week or two after I interviewed her, I was going through my own Amazon ads and I noticed that under categories, under the category ad, Kindle Vela is actually one of the categories now. Now understand, I have not run ads to those categories because I don't currently have anything on Kindle Vela. So I cannot speak to how well it works, but it does seem that Amazon is setting up to let us run ads to Kindle Vela. So I just wanted to put that in at first because when I um, interviewed Naomi, that was not the case. And that came about just in the few weeks after I interviewed her. Okay. So just something to keep in mind. And I hope you really enjoy the interview. And I'm telling you, it's very informative. You're going to learn a lot. So let's dive in. All right. So we are here today with author Naomi Alt. How are you doing, Naomi? Good. How are you? Good. Good. Thanks for being here. Um, why don't you start by telling everyone who you are and what you write? So I'm Naomi Alt. And currently, I write uh, serials um, about zombie cure zombies on uh, Amazon's Kindle Vela. <laughs> That's super fun. And, you know, I have so many people that ask me all kinds of questions about Kindle Vela, but I haven't actually, you know, done anything with Kindle Vela yet. So I would love to hear how you got into that and, you know, just whatever you can tell us about how it works. Sure. Um, well, I mean, how I got into it was I just sort of accidentally fell into it. I happen to be writing a, a story about uh, zombies, and as I was kind of writing it, it was just really timely that we started hearing announcements about this new, you know, serial fiction uh, format that Amazon was planning to roll out in July. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't think they ever actually gave us a date to, in the beginning. So, um, so I and it was kind of really lending itself to that kind of format. So I made like oh, some tweaks and and you know, crafted it a little bit differently. Uh, but it was pretty much written for that format just because I, I kind of lucked in on the timing. Yeah. So so what do you have to do to write for that format? I mean, are you talking about just writing like a chapter for each one or does it have to be super self-contained still? Or I mean, how does that work? So for for I think for a successful serial, um, you you really want, they call them episodes, first of all. So they right. don't really call them chapters. So, um, okay. Good want to it to be, yeah, it's like broke up and they call it seasons too, but we actually don't really have a way to break that up into seasons. It's a little strange. <laughs> uh, uh, you, you really kind of want it to be ongoing and you kind of want it to, you know, maybe be significantly longer than a traditional, um, you know, novel. I, I personally, I kind of embrace the seasons concept because I think that it's a good bridge for someone who's reading novels to kind of have like that beginning, middle and, and end before they move on to like a whole new problem, um, a whole new plot right. with that story. Uh, but successful serials, they, they may just go on and on and on. So, I mean, and that works too. <clears throat> Excuse me. So how about how long are your episodes then? So my episode length run, um, in the beginning, I, it was wild. They were all over the place. Uh, I was still trying to figure out, you know, the whole serial fiction thing. Um, I had some that were 40 tokens because uh, they run on tokens. Okay. And now, yeah, so like that would be 4,000 words. 
So okay. that's pretty long. I don't, I try to keep it between 15 to 20 tokens. So 1500 to 2000 words. So, so one token is basically a thousand words. A, to a token is 100 words. It's 100 words. Okay. Yeah. So if you get, if you do 1500 words, then the reader would, would spend 15 tokens to read. Interesting. That. So how does the, the reader are free. Say, say again? The first three episodes are free on every Vela. Oh, okay. So you can kind of like read, read it, get a feel for it, um, decide if you want to invest in the story. Okay. And then what I like about it is, I mean, I, I have read stories where I said, you know what, I, I, can't, I don't like this anymore. You just stop. You <laughs> yeah. stop buying tokens, you just stop buying episodes. That's all you have to do. So I like that. Yeah, that's interesting. And <clears throat> how do the readers get tokens? Do they just spend money to buy tokens or is there a certain number of tokens they get for a monthly membership or? So there's there's no membership. Um, it's not quite like Kindle Unlimited uh, in that mm -hmm. way, but they buy token packs. Um, you can okay. buy them on iOS, like right through your, through your iPhone or it's less expensive if you go to Amazon directly. So if you were on like a PC or the, um, a browser and buy them right from Amazon. Okay, interesting. And you said that when you do an episode, which yours are 1,500 to 2,000 words, you still keep basic story structure for within that episode? Oh yeah, for sure. Okay. Um, I mean, you want to end every episode on something that makes the people want to go on to the next episode. Yeah, And that's hard to do at first. I, I don't think I really kind of got that down until um, what I'd consider to be the second season. I struggled okay. with that a little bit, but so do you think it's like a, like a full on cliffhanger that you end on or just something smaller to kind of kick them forward? I don't think it's a good idea to always land on a, land on a cliffhanger because that gets okay. to be kind of tired, but something that makes them go, oh, I need to know what happens with Luke and what's he gonna say about this or that. So you want something to, at the end to make them wanna read. And you need to keep in mind too, when you're writing these, the next, episode is partially visible to the reader okay um, so they're going to see like the first three sentences huh. so don't resolve your cliffhanger <laughs> in your first three sentences you definitely want to at least wait maybe the next paragraph or something that would be funny you're like they're hanging over the side of the cliff in the first sentences but they were okay <laughs> yeah yeah you want to want to avoid doing that so <laughs> that's funny um, okay, so can you give us an idea of how payment for authors works through Kindle Vela? Like, how do you make money and, and what does it take to make decent money on it? So, well, that, that's, that's a longer answer <laughs> <laughs> um, as far as how to make money. Um, but they pay royalties, you know, so okay. that's like, you know, normal. Um, it, the money on royalties isn't great because it's currently only open to the United States. Uh, okay. And it's only been out for a year and mm -hmm. it is a different method of storytelling that I think people are still adapting to. I feel like we have a lot more organic readers than we used to, but I think it's going to take us several years to really kind of like build that up and they have to open it, you know, international. So. Right, right. Uh, but there's a bonus program. Um, it it's evolving, I would say. They, they said that they're going to continue to offer bonus um, for the foreseeable future, but it definitely has evolved since the beginning. So the rewards, I would say now, are you need to be on the top fave list, which is the top 250 velas in, on the platform. Uh, you need to have the rewarding for likes, follows, episode unlocks, and frequency of updating. I think that's it. I don't think I miss anything. So um, you would need to have all those components, and then those are those are factored into your bonus every month. Okay. Okay. And do they pay? Is it kind of like, is it like Kindle Unlimited where they pay royalties based on page reads or on tokens? It's yeah. It's not page reads. It's um, they pay the royalties based on the when someone unlocks. You know, you get the first three free. Uh -huh. Starting with episode four on, um, you get, I, I don't remember the percentage because honestly, the royalties stuff factor so little into what I'm thinking on Vela yeah. that I don't know it off the top of my head, um, but they give you a percentage of that, whatever that token cost was. So if 
somebody spent 50 cents in tokens, uh, let's say it's 50 50, then you're getting a quarter for that episode, for every episode. That okay. You come on. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Gotcha. But the bonuses are much better when it comes to, to being lucrative. Yeah. Yeah. At this time. I mean, I'd like to see it. And I'm excited to see what happens, you know, say five years from now, um, mm -hmm. when you're open, we're open internationally. Um, everybody's sort of embracing the idea of serial fiction and, you know, it's a little bit, a little bit of an easier sell because it is hard to get people to convert from. I wouldn't could try to convert a Kindle I'm a reader to this, but maybe somebody who likes to read, you know, books and things like that, especially by indie authors, I think that they'd be open to to the Kindle Bella experience. Yeah, yeah. So now when it comes to putting something on Kindle Bella, can you also put it somewhere else or do you have to be exclusive to Kindle Bella while it's on there? You can but it has you, you're only allowed to have i believe they find available freely on the internet so you have to make sure that everything is behind a paywall beyond that five thousand word limit so i don't know and i, I don't have mine any i don't really i think I, I use later press um for the serial format and then you can novelize them you can bundle the episodes into long form so i do have uh, a novel out and it's basically every all you know episodes one through 18 and that's season one for me and then my second one comes out uh, August 1st and so that'll be you know this many episodes and you can do that but you can't offer that for free so like if you're wide which I am you can't utilize perma free um, or anything like that you know it has to, you, they're going to have to make sure that they're paying something for the product. But when you bundle it like that and, and novelize it, can you put that everywhere wide as long as it's? Yes, yeah, you can go wide. Them. They have a 30 day roll. So let's say um, episodes one through 18 are going to be bundled, bundled into a novel. Episode 18 has to have been live on Kindle Bella for at least 30 days hmm. before you can even offer it for pre order. Okay. So if you're doing like an advanced pre order thing, you're going to have to time that, you know, properly. So, right, right. That's good to know. I think a lot of people would, you know, want to know if they could do both, but they can as long as they follow the 30 day rule. You can. There's a 30 day rule. Like I said, you can't, you know, when you're doing teasers and promos and freebies and things like that, um, keep in mind the 5,000 word rule. Um, my first episode is 2,200 words and it's actually a short story. So it kind of works out for me. Okay. I can actually kind of use the whole thing if I need to. Um, but other people, you know, they kind of want to put those three, three free episodes and you can't do that not fair I agree but you can't do it <laughs> so. so you couldn't even um if I'm understanding right the the, the free 5,000 words you couldn't offer those elsewhere for free you 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 can offer so that first three 5,000 words wherever that falls on your vela you could put that could be outside of a paywall um and that's the max that they allow okay so okay they say so they offer three free episodes you can't necessarily, for, now I'm not a lawyer and this could change because kind of <laughs> probably will. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Then they, and everyone interprets a little bit differently and that's fine too. But like the way that I interpret it is up to 5,000 words can be outside of a paywall. Now that okay. might only be two episodes for you. So maybe right. you need to only have two episodes for free elsewhere. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good to know. And, but I mean, just in terms of, of your success, you've seen a lot of success using Kindle Bella. I feel, yeah, I'm very happy with it. Um, you know, there's, there were some bugs in the rollout. Um, and I think that turned a lot of people off initially last year, which mm -hmm. I get, um, you know, it was frustrating, but um, I mean, I'm, I'm really happy with the way that things have gone for me. And I think that it's a, a, a valuable tool um, that I wish more people were using to get started uh, in indie publishing. Yeah. So, yeah, I would say I make far more, especially as a first time author, I would say I've made far more than I could have, than I ever even thought was possible with bonuses than I, than I even had, I've already put the, you know, I've had the first book out May 1st, not even touching bonus. So I mean, it's definitely, definitely worthwhile. It's worth, you know, maybe, maybe the occasional headache here and there. Yeah. Um, but I've been pretty happy with it. Yeah, I, I haven't I haven't run into too many people, and not not that I've talked to a lot, but who are doing really well on it. It seems like at most authors I've heard have gone, eh, I tried, it was kind of a bust, you know. So what do you think happened there? Like why are I guess why are authors failing at this? Um, you think it was just because of the initial bugs, or are there other things you think they're doing wrong that is making it not work for them? 
Well, I mean, I wouldn't say, I don't feel like anybody's failing at it. I think that patience um, was probably an issue early on. Okay. Uh, I know a lot of people who, you know, just said, this doesn't work, I'm done. And they pulled their stuff really early. Um, had they waited a few more months, I feel like uh, Kindle kind of, um, or KDP kind of fixed some of the issues and they may have been a little bit happier. I know initially okay. they, didn't, they didn't talk about a bonus. So when we were first putting our things up there, and I don't remember even, I don't remember when they started talking about a bonus, but even when they did, we didn't know what that meant. Uh, we didn't, you know, it's not like they ever said, hey, we're going to give you this number of dollars. Um, so we didn't know. And so you had to have a certain amount of trust there that they were <laughs> going to take care of you later. Yeah. Um, and it was frustrating. There were no readers. Uh, you know, it was just kind of a bunch of authors looking at each other, reading each other's stuff. Um, we weren't seeing a lot of advertising. Uh, if you didn't have a business background or a marketing background, that looked like to you that they were ignoring it or that they didn't care if it succeeded, wherein I, I kind of know how long it takes to get a marketing and a business thing going. So I knew that was going to be a few years. But yeah, I think people just gave up a little too early. Okay. In so, and then do you think, um, so are you, are you seeing more advertising now and more readers now then? Um, than when it began? Oh, certainly, yes. Okay. Um, and it's funny because it's been an immediate benefit. As we get new authors in, and it makes me laugh because they'll talk about, you know, oh, it's so slow. I had like X number of reads. And I'm like, I would have been thrilled in the beginning to have gotten that many reads, you know, but they only know where they came in at, you know, and there right. has been significant advertising done um, for the platform. I mean, they're running ads. We just had a Kindle challenge uh, and they included Bella in that. That was a great one for me. Um, but these newer authors are doing really well and they don't even know how much better they're <laughs> So yeah, I, but I think it's, yeah, I definitely think it's, it's working out. Now, I just thought of something else. Um, if let's say an author doesn't feel like they're doing very well, um, could they pull it from Kindle Bella and then the 30 day rule or the, the, the free versus pay raw, paywall rule wouldn't apply to them if they pull it out of Kindle Bella or does it, is that not the case? So, so you can, and this is okay. wild to me. So there's no, um, no contract. I, I, they've paid me, I feel this makes me laugh. They've paid me a significant amount of money. I could pull that story whenever I want. <laughs> and they may, you know, I don't know that they'll ever get that money back. If, you know what I mean? I feel like right. it's a while to get any, any money back on that investment that they made in mine at the other for sure um but there's no you know other than there's 60 days you have to notify them it's okay. going to take 60 days to remove it from the platform and then you are free to do whatever you want with it. okay um there's no restriction beyond that so uh that i don't know i'm surprised that they i'm surprised that that's the thing yeah <laughs> i wonder Some if that'll change in the future <laughs> yeah it might change in the future but um yeah i don't know so i think it's pretty generous but I'm new to publishing. This is my first, this is my first thing. So to me, it seems generous. Uh, well, no, I mean, I think that's pretty generous. I mean, in terms of Amazon, because they have, they're so right. picky about their KU exclusivity, you know? So that's, that's really right. interesting that they're not very picky about Bella, at least not yet. And, and like, if you were to sign with a traditional publisher, I don't think you have that, you know, you don't not right. have that kind of freedom. Very you know? true. Um, yeah. They're going to own that for, you know, whatever the contract is. I don't know anything about that either. I just kind of, what I've read. So, but yeah, I mean, yeah, no, you're right. Yeah. So I don't know. But for you, because you're wide, even though you are novelizing the books, you're still leaving them on Bella as well. Yes. Yes. So the serial is ongoing on Bella. So if you right. are the type of person that wants to know, like, I need to know the new stuff as soon as it comes out, the serial is perfect for you. If mm -hmm. you need to hold something in your hand, like, <laughs> uh, you can hold that in your hand, um, but you have to wait, you know, so those are, those are scheduled like May, August, and then November will be the third one. So trying to appease, um, you know, every, every type of reader. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. That's great. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, thanks for this. I, I, I've actually tried to talk to several people about Kindle Bella and nobody, at least that I found has been able to give me very good information about it, you know? So is there anything else you think authors should know about it going in or any other advice you have to give about it? I would say that um, it's it's pretty much, it's gonna fit the same uh, model as any self-published uh, venture. 
you're going to have to do the marketing. You're going to have to do the work. Um, there isn't uh, the biggest complaint I see is they're not, or that I used to see was, uh, you know, they're not marketing it. They're not helping us find readers. I am new at this. This is the only thing I've ever done, but to my understanding, nobody's going to help you find readers anywhere. Right. You're, you're going to be responsible for that on your own, no matter where you publish or what you're doing. Um, so I don't see any difference in that. And you're just going to have to, you know, I hate to say it, but you got to hustle. So. <laughs> is, is there anything that you do to, to market to Vela? I mean, as far as I know, you can't run an Amazon ad to something at, at Kindle Vela, right? Or can you? You you cannot run Amazon ads at this time, but they just rolled out. We just now are able to um, tie our Amazon author page to our Vela's, which we never could oh. do that before. Yeah, that's um, good. So that, yeah, I don't know why we couldn't do that, but we can do that now. So <laughs> I wonder if ads are, are maybe coming up on the horizon. Yeah, that could be. Yeah, I, I do, and I have been doing Facebook ads, which do really well for me. Oh, okay. I don't really know that much about Amazon ads, so I don't know that I'm going to jump on that when it comes, but I might dabble. Um, and then social media. Uh, I, I probably got all my early readers from Instagram. Okay. Um, and now that TikTok is a thing, I if someone was jumping into it, I would definitely say, if you have a time, you can do it, jump on TikTok. That mm -hmm. is probably like the single best thing. I, I hear success story after success story. Um, and I'd like to try it, but I don't know. I always feel kind of awkward on TikTok. <laughs> yeah, I've actually yeah. just recently jumped on there, but I will admit I'm doing I'm what I'm doing on TikTok. TikTok I'm gearing more toward authors than toward readers, so I can't yeah. say I've had tons of success for my own fiction. I need to kind of focus in on that a little bit. But you know, it's yeah. interesting that you bring that up because I was just thinking. I wonder if Kindle Vela could almost be like a TikTok for authors. I mean, it's different, and so you know both traditionally published and even indie authors that have been doing this for like 10 years, it's weird to them and they're having a hard time jumping on, but who knows? I mean, maybe it's, it's going to be the next thing that's going to go really big and get people a lot of readers, you know? Yeah. I, I really, I, I see it as being successful. I've invested a lot of my time and my money into um, utilizing it. Uh, it's like a tool, like anything else. Um, you know, you, Without Vela, you know, let's say we're talking about Kindle Unlimited, that's a tool that you're using to build up your reader platform. And that's basically what I use Kindle Vela for. Um, right. Great relationship. They use me, I use them. It's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, I, and I, and I think that if you approach it that way, I think it's a lot easier to kind of keep everything in perspective and figure yeah, out what no. you need to do. Yeah, that's interesting. I haven't really seriously considered going into it, but yeah, now I'm kind of, I'm thinking about it. It's uh, getting me thinking about some yeah. stuff. So if somebody wanted to kind of join and get started, what would you recommend? Just get on the platform and dive in or are there tutorials of any kind? So this is a good time to ask me this question. I'm actually just starting a new, I'm co-writing one with a friend um, who has not uh, yet published professionally before and is also new to Vela at the same time. And so we're plotting out uh, this, this joint venture and we're doing it um, in such a way based on things that I've learned over the last year. And the very first thing is we researched our genre really well. Um, we researched the tropes and things that people, you know, writing to market, so to speak. Right. So that, um, we're building marketable things into the story now so that okay. later when it comes time to market the story, you know, the taglines will write themselves uh, because a good tagline, you really needed like a good tagline. The one that I have for Chew, it didn't show up until probably four months later, you know? Oh, um, wow. Yeah, like, you know, this stuff kind of like evolved over time. So the things I'm using now evolved over time. So I'm, I'm hoping that speed that process up now. If you write it that way from the beginning, I feel like it will, um, it'll be a benefit to you. You know, we're still writing what yeah. we want. We're still writing a, a story that excites us. We're building a world that's unique, um, but we're just keeping the stuff in mind. Um, we want stuff that's marketable. We want stuff that people want to read. Um, just take a look at the first 25 stories on Top Saved. You know, what's on there? It's, it's a whole lot of romance. So that's yeah. kind of what people are wanting to read about. <clears throat> and from there, what are those successful authors doing? You know, some mm -hmm. of them have a Patreon and they offer extras uh, on the Patreon. You know, if you want to, there's an extended scene, go over there and check this out. Um, I have a speakeasy that opens 
soon, as soon as I get to that part in the story. But like the in the story, the characters have a speakeasy that they're that they just you know bought, and they'll have meetings and things there. So I have a virtual speakeasy on the website. It's it's an interesting way to bridge, you know, from the story to keeping that little fantasy world going. Um, right. And if you think about this stuff when you're writing it, and you really like sit down and come up with like a business plan for your story, which you should. Um, yeah. And it really well. Yeah, that's no, that's awesome because I think that's something that authors were getting better at it, but it's not something we always automatically think of. And I love that idea of having a business plan, not just for your writing career, but for your story. That's I think that's really cool. Yeah, I think so, if you um, sit down and like really just brainstorm ideas, you don't have to use all of them. You know, just right. sit down and think of 20 things, 25 things that you think readers might be interested in, um, and then see what happens. You know? Yeah, yeah. And do you get like direct feedback from the readers on the site? Like they'll tell you what they like and what they don't like. So there's no way for them to read comments. You can leave, the author can leave like a little author note at the end of every episode, but there is no way at this time uh, for readers to leave any kind of comment for the author. Um, I know that's really popular in other serial fiction sites. I'm kind of, I don't know. I have mixed feelings about that. And so do a lot of the authors. Like you want it and you don't want it. Yeah. On one hand, if I'm answering comments a lot, um, that's less time I'm writing and that's really like already right. having to struggle with that. So um, yeah, that, they reach out on social media. Uh, I have a okay. newsletter um, and I encourage in the newsletter all the time, like, oh, hey, what are you doing this weekend? Like, oh, what's your favorite period movie? You know, all that kind of stuff. So I'm hoping that, you know, they can reach me. It should be pretty easy to reach me, even though you, they can't <laughs> comment right in the story. I'm hoping I'm making it easy enough that they can still. Right. You can put that in the author's note or something, how they can right. reach out. Yeah. So there aren't any kind of like reviews or anything on Kindle Vela? Yeah, so you can leave Amazon reviews, Amazon reviews on the Vela. You can, okay. Uh, should you, yeah, and if you, now when I turned this into a novel, they don't carry over. So you start okay. over from zero when you uh, publish it into long form. Um, okay. So, you know, but you, but you can, yeah, no, it does. You can leave actual regular Amazon reviews. Good, good. And, you know, you kind of answered this a little bit, but are there certain genres that do better than other genres? I mean, romance, I kind of <laughs> think most of us figures romance always does well, no matter what format it's in. But have you noticed any yeah. other trends? Romance, paranormal romance. Um, you know, that, that's probably like far and away. You know, okay. uh, there's a there's a marketing person who for free will put up in the community a, a little report and Michael Lee, and he, and I, I'm, and I haven't looked at it lately, but um, it's always historically been, it looked like romance was pretty far and away, like the, the clear winner on that. Um, surprisingly, there isn't even a category for horror. Um, mm -hmm. I have to use a tag, you know, when you sit down and you figure out what you, which is another strategy, you should really sit down, you're thinking about Bella and figure out what categories and what tags you're going to want to use. It's just as important as it is when you're putting it on, you know, as a regular novel, you know, figuring out right. your keywords and things. So I would say, yeah, definitely that one. Romance. So is there a place that authors could go to kind of, like you said, there's this report, um, where does that get posted? Or is there a place they can go to do research on this? So there's a number of, um, you know, books on, on or groups on Facebook uh, that okay. are, specific to Kindle Vela authors. So I would definitely like join the community. You know, if it's something you're thinking of doing, join the community and see what people are talking about. Um, it just, you know, those kinds of spaces. We don't really, I don't think there's any kind of formal, any one go-to place that's emerged, you know, quite yet. Right. Um, but there's, right. there's tons of groups, tons and tons of groups that you could, you could Okay. From. Yeah. And Facebook groups, usually they're pretty good about <laughs> spreading information and, and being able to find what you want. So um, how, how do readers find you on Kindle Bella? Is there a search bar or do they find you through Amazon or, you know, how do they find your, like your horror story if somebody wants to read horror on Kindle and it's not even a, an actual category? So yeah, it's tough. Um, searching is still, I, I think, an issue that they need to they need to work on and make a little bit easier for readers to find things. If mm -hmm. you go to Amazon and you type in um, to Naomi Alt, it's going to come up with my Vela and the regular novel. So it will come okay. up if you know what you're looking for. If you're in the Vela site, so like you have your iPhone and your 
you're in uh, the Kindle app, it's a little harder. You know, they, they do have tags that you can search the tags. Um, you can search through the top faves, you know, if you just want to see like the stuff that's really that everybody's really reading and is hot right now. Um, they have a couple carousels uh, recently updated. They just added, which I'm a fan of. I like that. So if you're updating, then you're gonna pop, you're gonna pop up in that carousel, and that's great. Um, but it is, it is a little tough. Like I don't feel like it's as easily searchable maybe as some other serial fiction sites. Okay. So. Something maybe that they'll you know kind of fix as, as it evolves and goes forward. I hope so. I mean, I don't, they don't share the roadmap with us. Um, right. They just sort of surprise, like, hey, you can, you can now update, you know, you can link your Vela to your author page down on Amazon. It's like, oh, right. cool. Um, but yeah, so I don't know. I, I, I hopefully, hopefully that soon you can, I did a link. So like, if you go, I actually bought a, um, a URL and I redirected it because it was so much easier to tell people, especially in person. Right. Um, you know, right. And I just like read chew.live is what it is. And so when they just type that in, it's super easy to remember. And then it takes them to the fellow is what I did. Yeah, that's, that's a good I tip. Was, I was, yeah, if I was marketing it, I would just come up with your own URL, redirect it. And, you know, I think it was like $5 a year or something. So yeah. it saved yeah. me a lot of time. Or even like a, a bit.ly or a, one of those. There's so many different services that do that now. Yeah, there's my microphone this thing is terrible um so <laughs> yeah there's probably a better way to do it than I did because I know that um the person who passed that on to me um uh Marty Shannon has said you know he has like a service and it counts the clicks and all that stuff and I'm like yeah yeah yeah, yeah that sounds great let me, <laughs> let me just give people to my story so you probably should do it the way that he does it and like kind of see where the traffic goes and all that stuff so um yeah yeah <laughs> so take the idea and be smart about it there you go yeah <laughs> Well, you know, thank you so much for being here. This has been really, really informative. And um, I'd love to have you on again sometime and kind of see how things are going and, you know, maybe six months down the road, see how Kindle Bella has changed and all of that. Sure, sure. That sounds so great. If, um, if you had to give, you know, one piece of advice to up and coming authors, especially someone who's considering Kindle Bella, what would you tell them? I, you can do it. That's <laughs> what I would say. You can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. I believe that hundred percent. Great, great. And I actually, that just made me think of one other thing. Is there, um, so for example, if I were going to take a story and start doing this and I already have an email list, is there any kind of, um, I, I don't know, do they give rewards, you know, for getting reads quickly when it goes up or is it just a matter of overall reads for the week? I mean, I mean in terms of how they de uh, determine who's on the favorites list and all of that? Well, we don't say, I don't, that's a good question, actually. And I never thought about that. Um, we don't know how they technically okay. uh, calculate the bonus. Um, we, all we know is what they say when they, every month, kind of like with the, the KU, um, when they post that, uh, the royalty bonus, whatever that is, and they tell you, they give us a notice too. And in that notice, it says, we use, and they kind of like give you a little laundry list of the stuff that they consider to be important. And unless uh -huh. you go back to the month before, you won't know of anything different. So you, you they have okay. to kind of like compare and keep track. And we just all guess. Like I keep a data spreadsheet and I just kind of like count things, <coughs> make educated guesses about, you know, how much I could right. maybe expect the next month, <laughs> but we don't know for sure. It's all a mystery. Yeah, typical Amazon stuff, keeping it close to the chest and all that. Yeah, well, you know, it was very easily gamed in the beginning. So mm -hmm. I think maybe part of that, you know, isn't like they want to keep us in the dark. I think they're just trying to prevent people from gaming that system, yeah. uh, which they're doing, you know, because they were paying a bonus just for you to post the story on the site initially. Mm -hmm. um, they were paying something towards the free reads initially. So those first three, it seemed like you were getting something. Um, okay. So there were tons of people posting hundreds of stories and then trying to cash in on that. And, the, you know, and they were plagiarized stories. They weren't even real, yeah. um, you know, not really theirs. So, and now, of course, they did away with that. So I think that'll, that should come down. Um, Good. Sort of thing. And uh, one last question. How often do you post as an author? How often do you post a new episode? So I'm on hiatus. Uh, I had like some things going on. I had to take like a hiatus. And now that I'm launching, you know, I'm pretty much full time getting that next book ready. However, when I'm actively posting, I do uh, twice a week. 
I do a Sunday and a Wednesday. Um, and I actually write another serial too. And I do that one twice a week when I'm actively posting to that. And that would be like Sunday, Thursday. Okay. And do they, do they have anything they recommend in terms of how often to post or is it just whenever you want? So they don't rec you know, they say that there's for, you know, the posting schedule is considered in your bonus amount. Um, and the only thing that I know is from hearing other, you know, in the Facebook groups, people like kind of compare and I, at one time people were saying people who posted every day were doing better, okay. um, than people who maybe were only posting once a week. How much better? I don't, I think there's so many factors that go into figuring out your individual bonus that yeah. Yeah. when somebody tries to compare a romance to a, a murder mystery, I, I don't think right. that, apples and oranges so yeah it's tough cool well thank you so much for giving us all this information I, I really enjoyed having you here thanks I enjoyed being here thanks for inviting me and do you have a link that uh we can send people to your books on on Bella sure you could just find it at naomialt.com and you everything's right there in the navigation pane find everything great you need. great I will link that up in the show notes all right thanks thank again you. and good luck with everything thanks